When I was a child, I loved painting, but most of my paintings look like this. And although my mom always said that they were beautiful, I'm not so sure she was 100% honest with me. So as you see, I had to give up an idea of being an artist very early and had to move on to something rather more realistic. Few years later, I started studying at University of Technology and I was taught that you can do almost anything using programming. And I was like, huh, really? Anything? So I started wondering if the nature didn't decide to give me any artistic talent, maybe I could paint using programming. Maybe I could paint like famous artists, like Van Gogh or Da Vinci. So the key question here is, can we paint using programming? And my name is Agnieszka, and today I'm going to show you that, yes, we can. So when I was at university, I was taught many, many things. Some of them were more practical, some of them less, of course. But I will always remember that the key to solving problems in programming is proper modeling. So if we take a look at one of the most famous paintings in the world, what we can see? We see a woman, of course. We see some nature in background. We see her intriguing smile. But if we take a really, really close look at this, all we can see, and Da Vinci, please forgive me, is just pixels, a lot of them. And each pixel can be represented in RGB model. So we will try to repaint famous Mona Lisa using genetic algorithm. And in this case, we will use only one type of figure, which is triangle. So let's set up some rules. You will have defined size of population and each individual in this population will be represented as a single image. And each image will be made of defined numbers of figures, in our case, triangles. We will start with some random triangles. And if the population size is set up to 50, we will have 50 images that will look more or less like this. The key in genetic algorithm is always choosing the best one. And how we can do it? We can measure the distance between pixel in source image and current image using this formula and sum it for all the pixels where X stands for source image, Y for current image, and RGB is just red, green, and blue. Then we choose the defined numbers of images with the smallest distance. And those chosen one are going to be the parents for the next generation. And the rest is going to be forgotten. There are several other methods of choosing the best one, like a roulette wheel selection or tour tournament selection, but always choosing the ones with the smallest distance is the best because there is no random factor in this algorithm at all. So now let's talk how babies are made. We can do it in several ways. We can let the faith decide whether each triangle is going to be from mother or from father, or we can take the first half of triangles from mother and the second half from father, or we can split uh, triangles of parents' image into sections and take the first section from mother, then from father, then from mother, ag from mother again, and so on. As in real life, mutation can happen. It occurs with a defined probability. And what is mutation? Mutation is a simply a figure that is not coming from mother or from father. We can implement it as changing a color of triangle or changing one of three coordinates uh, of the figure. Interesting fact is that if we switch off the mutation from an algorithm, it stops. All of the images in the population starts to look the same in a very short time and the algorithm became, became just useless. So this algorithm is simply a loop. 
it, we decide when, we, when it stops, and it stops when the result is satisfying for us. And I ask you a question at the beginning of this talk, can we paint using programming? Yes, we can. This is Mona Lisa after almost 20,000 generation of genetic algorithm. And uh, it was made using only 150 triangles. And I think if Mona Lisa lived today, she may use this, use this photo as her profile photo on Facebook. <laughs> Thank you.